Today I'm going to show you our most recent results of applying optimized 3D synthetic aperture to controlled source electromagnetics. So part of the motivation for this research is that we're looking for smaller, thinner reservoirs in more complicated settings, such as shallow water or in the presence of gas hydrates. And these reservoirs could be vertically stacked or even laterally separated. And all these things lead to um, difficulties in finding and extracting hydrocarbons. They also exacerbate some of the limitations of controlled source electromagnetics. Controlled source electromagnetics, or CSEM, is a geophysical method where a boat tows a horizontal electric dipole source over receivers placed on the ocean floor. And the method is able to detect the resistive reservoirs within the conductive subsurface. So one limitation of CSEM is that because the subsurface is conductive and the frequency of the source is low, the EM fields are diffusive. This means that the signal decays rapidly over time and that only a small portion contains information about the reservoir. CSEM also has low resolution when compared to other methods such as seismic. So these drawbacks prompted an investigation into how to enhance the signal from the reservoir. And the technique that we propose to do that is optimize synthetic aperture. So this is a pseudo depth slice of some synthetic CSEM data with noise. And the color bar here is showing you the normalized difference. So when we apply our optimized synthetic aperture, to this. This is the result. So here we've increased the magnitude, reduced the noise, and also better defined the structure. So I'll take you through how we apply optimized synthetic aperture to CSEM. First, I'll introduce synthetic aperture, then I'll describe our optimization process, and finally I'll show you some results with synthetic data. The basic idea of synthetic aperture is to take multiple individual sources and add them together to create one large source. And because we're adding together multiple sources, we're able to weight them before summing to steer or focus the source in the inline, crossline, or both directions. And the process of synthetic aperture is summarized in this equation. So here, F is, there is any component of the electric or magnetic field for a source J at a receiver location R. And this is at a single frequency. And so this response is multiplied by a weight, which I'm showing here as A sub J. Um, and then these weighted uh, responses, the weighted responses from the sources in our synthetic aperture array are summed together. So previously, we had used exponential weighting, which forced our source array to radiate like a plane wave at a fixed steering angle. We switched to this more general weighting because it allows us more flexibility in choosing the weights. But now we need to find the best weight for each source included in our synthetic aperture array. And so we needed to develop an optimization method that would use the information in the response to find the best weight. But first, we had to define what an optimal result would be. And so there are several different measures of detectability in CSEM, but we chose to use the difference. And this is the difference between the weighted response from the model with the reservoir, often called the pay field, and I'm denoting that here by S superscript P, and the weighted response from the, the model without the reservoir, which is also called the wet field. So I'm denoting that here by S superscript W. And what we want to do is maximize the difference between those two weighted responses, which I'm calling delta S. 
So we define our optimization problem to be that we want to maximize the squared absolute value of this difference. But there's one more component we need to add to this problem, and that's a constraint placed on the weights. And we need to do that because we don't want to arbitrarily increase the amount of energy that's radiated by our source array. And so we place a constraint to fix the amount of energy that is radiated. So now we have a constrained optimization problem. And these are typically solved with Lagrangian multipliers. However, because of the quadratic nature of our problem, we can solve it in a different way. If you consider the problem pictorially, the constraint that we place on our weights is a sphere in three dimensions, and our objective function is an ellipsoid. So our vector optimal weights will be where the ellipsoid touches the sphere. And so to find this vector, um, we use the fact that we have a quadratic objective function, and we form a Hermitian matrix. We then rotate that matrix to the principal axes and find the largest eigenvalue. And the eigenvector that corresponds to that eigenvalue is our vector of optimal weights. And so we repeat this process for every source array location and for all receivers. And what this optimization can do is use the information encoded in the response to find the optimal weights. And this is nice because it doesn't require any input from the user to determine if steering or focusing is best. So to show you the, the benefits of this method, I'm going to um, show you some results from some synthetic data that was provided to us by the Shell EMT. So this is a cross section of our synthetic model. It represents a shallow water situation with two reservoirs that are laterally separated. The water depth here is 200 meters, and the sediments are a layered anisotropic earth model with vertical resistivities that range from 1.5 to 3.5 ohm meters. The reservoirs are located at 1.5 kilometers deep and are 50 meters thick and have a resistivity of 50 ohm meters. And they're separated laterally by 1.5 kilometers. The survey geometry for this model follows a typical CSEM survey setup where we have five parallel tow lines, and these each have 186 source locations. And we have one line of receivers, one line of 61 receivers that are spaced 500 meters apart. And that line of receivers is centered over our reservoirs. And the source that was used was a horizontal electric dipole source with a length of 270 meters at a frequency of 0.2 hertz. And we have the inline electric response for this model with the reservoirs present and without the reservoirs present. So a common way to view CSEM data is to look at a common midpoint versus offset image. This is nice because it gives us a sort of a pseudo depth slice of, um, it gives us a pseudo depth slice. So here the color bar is showing you the normalized difference between the inline electric component of the fields with the reservoir and the inline electric component of the fields without the reservoir. We added a typical instrument noise level to the synthetic data to simulate real data. And you can see the noise starting to come in at larger offsets. And our anomaly from the two reservoirs is located around seven kilometers offset, which is typical for CSEM. And it has a maximum of 27%. And here it's difficult to see that there's actually two reservoirs present. So I'm going to use this synthetic data to show you the benefits of our optimized synthetic aperture method. And I'm going to show you two different applications 
of synthetic aperture to this synthetic data. The first is for a situation where the target location is unknown. And so in that case, your goal would be to increase the detectability. The second example is for a situation where the target location is known, but the structure is unknown. And specifically for the model we have, we wanted to see if we could increase the separation between the anomalies from the two reservoirs. So I'll start with the example of increasing detectability. In this case, the most appropriate synthetic aperture to apply is 2D synthetic aperture. And this is because um, adding more sources together means more information about the reservoir. So the first step in applying our optimization method is determine the length and width of the synthetic aperture source. For this example, we chose to use 21 sources in the inline direction and five sources in the crossline direction. And the extent of our synthetic aperture array is shown by the red rectangle. So the next step is to then take the responses of the sources within this um, source array put them, and put them into our optimization method. We form the Hermitian matrix, rotate it to the principal axes, and find the largest eigenvalue. And the eigenvector that corresponds to that eigenvalue will be our vector of optimal weights for this source array location. And so we repeat that process for all possible source array locations and for all receivers. And then we apply the optimal weights to our data. So this is the result of our 2D optimized synthetic aperture. So you can see when I compare it to the original data that we've increased the magnitude of the anomaly. The maximum here is 46%, which you can compare to the 27% of the original data. We've also increased the spatial area of the anomaly, and we've almost completely stacked out the effects of the noise. So we can look at the optimal weights that created this image. So here I'm showing a single source array location overlaid on top of a map view of our survey geometry. And the contours within, this, within the source array is showing the phase of the optimal weights. And this is for the receiver located in the center of the array. So for this source array location, the optimal weights are steering in the inline direction by giving a larger phase to sources farther away from the reservoirs, and it's focusing in the cross-line direction by giving the sources in outer toe lines a higher phase than those in the center. And so we can look at several different uh, source array locations to see how the optimal weights are changing. And as we approach the center of our survey, the weighting shifts to focus in both the inline and crossline directions. And as we move past the reservoirs, the inline steering changes to send the energy back towards the reservoir. So we can also look at the amplitude for the same locations. So here, now the, the color is showing you the amplitude of the optimal weight. And what I would like you to focus on is the amount of blue, that dark blue that you can see within the source array as I move it through the same source array locations. So if the amplitude is also changing to account for uh, the best sources for different source array locations. But what you can see is that in most of the source array locations, there's a large area of blue which is equal to an amplitude of close to zero. What this is showing us is that we actually 
don't need all of the sources we've included in this source array. We could have chosen a synthetic aperture width that was smaller. However, because we're using our optimization method, it was able to recognize which sources had the most information and just downweighted the sources that it didn't need. And so there's no harm in choosing a synthetic aperture that's too large. So with this 2D synthetic aperture, we're able to increase the magnitude and reduce the noise. But we also blurred together the two anomalies from the, re the two reservoirs. Which leads me to my second example. With CSEM, there's often difficulties in determining if there's one target or two. And so the, for our model, we wanted to see if we could use synthetic aperture to heighten the differences from two anomalies versus having one. So for this, it was, or with, sorry, with the 2D synthetic aperture example, it was the averaging caused by the summing of multiple sources in the inline direction that averaged those two anomalies together. So if we want to um, preserve or increase the differences in the inline direction, the most appropriate synthetic aperture to apply is cross-line only synthetic aperture. And for cross-line only synthetic aperture, we choose to use only one source in the inline direction and all five sources in the cross-line direction. And again, the red rectangle is showing you the extent of this cross-line only source. And so we go through the same process of determining the optimal weights and then applying those to the image. So this is the result of cross-line only synthetic aperture. When we compare it to the original data shown here, you can see that again, we've increased the magnitude of the anomaly and reduced the noise. But more importantly, we've been able to differentiate those two anomalies much better. And so we can again look at the optimal weights that created that image. So I'm going to show you the phase of the optimal weights for three different source array locations, shown here by the green, red, and blue rectangles. And so for all those locations, the optimal weights are focusing the energy towards the center of the reservoir. And as you move closer to the center, the curvature of the focusing increases. Now, we didn't ask our algorithm to focus the energy towards the center of the reservoir. Instead, it was the optimization method that was able to recognize the symmetry in the cross-line direction of our survey geometry, and it determined by itself that the optimal weighting was focusing for this situation. And so we're able to use synthetic aperture to extract more information from controlled source electromagnetic data. And we do that by applying weighting that, that, that is able to, to determine the best steering or focusing without the input of a user. And this will also work for um, any different survey geometry. But the full impact of synthetic aperture is still unknown. Typically, controlled source electromagnetic data is inverted to get more information about the structure and resistivity. And we have not done that yet with synthetic aperture. So it could be that the 2D example that I showed you has more structural information once inverted. So that's a future research step. Another thing we'll be doing in the future is applying synthetic aperture to more complicated models, such as vertically stacked reservoirs and reservoirs near salt. But I've shown you today that optimized synthetic aperture is able to overcome some of the limitations of CSEM 
in complicated environments. And I'd like to end by acknowledging my fellow CWP students and my co-authors on this project and finally thank the Shell Game Changer Project for financial support. So thank you and I'll take your questions.